we can see that in First Timothy uh, 2, it says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. So the idea is, is that this is a whole category that we don't do. We don't pray for our leaders like we should. We might maybe a couple of weeks before an election say, God, please give us a favorable election. But then we forget to pray for them afterwards. And whether they're a Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, maybe even that guy with a boot on his head all the way off in, uh, in the New England area, we're supposed to be praying for those who are in authority because it says that it's God's will that all men would be saved and come to knowledge of the truth and that we live lives that are peaceable and honest and in righteousness. He wants our nation to be, to be one that exudes his righteousness. He wants his kingdom come. He wants us to have peace. He wants us to have those things, but the things he's, but he tells us we need to pray for them. Now this is interesting because this was done back at a time period in which uh, a time period in which you couldn't influence your authorities. You couldn't tell them the right ways of God and, and they're supposed to respond to you. You couldn't vote for whoever you wanted to vote for or set up new rulers that you wanted to. But even in this time in which you, they had the least amount of influence when it came to, you know, regular government wise, you know, the Lord was saying you still have influence because you can pray. So how much the more nowadays where we can take action and be able to help our, our, our communities know Christ and including the civic arena. So this is something that we're going to be doing. We're going to be praying for great commission work. So the lost that are in the communities and also great commandment work, loving your neighbor as yourself. And we are, we can love our communities by praying for our leaders, by praying for our, uh, for the things that are going on in the civic arena. So one of the things we're going to be praying about today is actually along those lines is the fact that there is a Senate seat that is up for election actually in the Columbia area. Um, Corson was removed from office and uh, now we have a, a runoff that's going to happen in August 17th in this area. And what we're really praying for is a candidate that has a strong heart for pro-life issues. So in other words, one that will take a stand when it comes to protecting the unborn. And in the state, most of you, uh, some of you may know that we have personhood legislation. So personhood legislation, we're trying to get it passed. It's, it, this past year, it went farther than it ever has before. And what it does is it clears the unborn a person. And when that happens, the unborn will have the same protection underneath the law as everyone else. And so in, in essence, we'll be able to completely abolish abortion through this particular means. Now, it has a few provisions for life of mother, and then also it says it won't uh, uh, at all modify or touch the idea of IVF. But outside of those things, it, it's the idea that the unborn is a person and worthy to protect, the life is worthy to be protected as every other life is. And so this legislation, we're hoping that our, the people that are going to take the seat, the person that takes a seat will be a strong supporter of this particular uh, legislation. Uh, and in fact, there are four GOP candidates right now and two of them have actually signed the pledge to support personhood legislation. And that is Dunn, I think Benjamin Dunn and Christian Stagmeyer. I from John Holler and again, I can't remember the other candidate. I'm so sorry uh, off the top of my head, but the other two have not responded as of yet. So if you want, if you happen to know these other two candidates and you want them to be able to get some more support, make sure that they understand the issue of life. Make sure they understand the importance of supporting these particular uh, issues in our state and that they should be signing, contacting Personhood South Carolina and signing the pledge for support for that. Also, it's important for us to actually show up and vote for a, a candidate that would support life. Uh, and this is a swing district, so it is not a done deal that a, a pro-life candidate will get in. So make sure that you're out there telling your friends, telling your church members, you know, this is an important election for life, for the lives of many people within our state. So we're going to be praying for that today. So please join me as I pray today. 
Dear Lord, I just want to thank you so much that you long for all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth and that you do want our nation to reflect you and your ways so that we can live quiet, peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty, that you want us to have the freedom to be able to live in ways that please you. That is something that is near and dear to our hearts. So when we come to you and ask for these things, we know that we're praying for things that you want. And because we pray for things that you want, we know that you hear us and that you will answer our prayers. And we thank you, God, that because of Jesus, you will hear us and that we have access. We have this confidence that we can come to you when we need you. And Lord, right now, I think about the uh, Senate seat 20. Uh, Lord, this is a really important election. And, and I know it's one that maybe that goes by and large unnoticed in a lot of different areas. But Lord, we really want to see uh, life valued. We want to see us loving life. You said in, in, in Psalms 193 that you knew us before we were even formed in our mother's womb, that you planned who we were. In other, you know, we talk about planned parenthood, but God, you, in your word, you talk about planned personhood. You planned us. You knew us. You wanted us before we were even formed. And so that tells us, Lord, that these unborn children are precious to you. And I just pray, Lord, that you, that you would set somebody up in this seat that would have that same heartbeat and that would have the courage and the integrity and, um, and loves you enough to stand up for these children and to support personhood legislation in our area. Lord, I pray for your people right now that are in this area, uh, that you would mobilize them and speak to their hearts and say, this issue is so important. They need to be involved. They need to be praying for, for, um, for this particular election. They need to be telling their friends and their church members and their pastors that they need to support the candidates like Benjamin Dunn and Christian Stagmeyer who have signed the personhood, um, personhood uh, pledge and said that they will support life, all life, that they won't let some life be killed or they won't like, let this uh, slaughter continue, that they will stand. And that's the kind of people we need in office, God. People who have courage and who love you enough to be able to follow you no matter what. And that's what we ask God. And we ask for what, for that person to be that, to be the one that is elected and that your people will be bold and that will talk to their friends and neighbors about this. Lord, I, I also pray for the fires that are happening out in California. God, it breaks my heart to hear what danger that they're in over there and uh, how that, you know, six to eight lives, I believe, have been lost. I've heard two different reports, six to eight lives that are lost, and that's six to eight lives too many. And Lord, I just ask that you would protect everyone out there and not one more life be lost because of this fire and so that more people will have more chances to say yes to you, to have more chances to be able to know who you are. In fact, if anything, God, let this fire drive people to you. Help them to understand that they need you and let your body come alongside all the people they are. People have lost homes. People have lost everything. That your people will come alongside these people and help provide and show the love that you have for them. Lord, we often, as we say in Contagious Disciple Making, we often create atheists by how we act as Christians, that we don't follow your ways. We don't do what you tell us to do. And that's how you've planned to answer people's prayers most of the time. And so when people cry out to you and hear no answer, perhaps it's because we have not been obedient to you. And so, Lord, I just ask that you would mobilize your people that you would move your people to, to uh, be involved in the situation over there. God, I, uh, I pray for also our local area that you, uh, and also the nation, that you would create and stir in the hearts of your people a desire for something different, to get back to the Bible, to get back to reaching out to the lost and reaching out to our communities and being your hands and feet to those around us. 
that Lord, that you would create a movement amongst your people that we will unite in our desire to see our, the lives of those of us changed because through your gospel, to see our communities change because now we're obeying your ways and following your ways to see our nation become a nation that loves and believes in you because all of us have reached our local areas for you. And how exciting, God, it would be someday to be once again considered that shining city on the hill for the rest of the world to look like and just stand in amazement at what it looks like for the kingdom of God to come. And it's not about the, the nation, America. It's about your kingdom. It's about us acting in such a way that pleases you, that sees the poor taken care of and the, the needy loved on and the lost coming to be saved and our, 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 um, the people of God acting as a family of God together and the love that we show one another would be such a testimony and a light that we will see, oh Lord, that we will see racial re reconciliation, that we'll see people living together in peace and harmony and love because now we have your Holy Spirit inside of us. Now we're walking in that Holy Spirit. So Lord, because of that, I ask specifically in my area, the Midlands of South Carolina, that you would bring people to our D South Carolina disciple making community and that people from across the state will want to start these prayer gatherings and disciple making communities and will want to be able to follow you and be able to put in these simple practices to see movement happen, to see the lost saved, to see the, the giants that of, of that have plagued our nation be taken down, whether it's human trafficking or abortion, or uh, like I said, uh, violence, and, you know, a corruption to see those, those giants be taken down and the, all the glory and honor given to you, O oh Lord. We, we ask for your name to be glorified in this. We are confident that you hear us, God. And we ask you, Lord, that you would stir on our hearts, the pastors, the ministry leaders, the laymen, the individual Christians of our, of our Midlands and South Carolina and our nation to gather together to stop our pride and, and our competition with one another and join together in prayer and in efforts to be able to see your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I ask these things in your name, I pray. Amen.